Thank you for joining me in this straight business talk video. I'm David Averland and in this series of videos I usually explore some of the fundamental concepts that guide businesses in order to give you an idea of how you can better align your own thinking with your stated goals. If you achieve this kind of alignment the aim is to help you achieve what you want with less effort at a shorter time. And today we're going to talk about something that was in effect 2,000 years ago, probably a little bit more than that. Now, we can argue that if something was in effect that long ago, it probably has nothing to do with business today. And from a technical point of view, you're absolutely right. It doesn't. Things have changed so much. Everything has um, accelerated in terms of technology, in terms of connections, in terms of access to resources, that it bears almost no resemblance at all to the situation back then. But what hasn't changed fundamentally, what drives everything fundamentally, is human behavior. And that's exactly what we're going to look at today. And to do that, we're going to use the Oracle Adelphi, uh, the Apollo's Oracle Adelphi in ancient Greece. Now, for, for those of you who don't know your history, in the ancient world, there was the Delphic Oracle. It was the, called the Pythian Oracle because Pythia, Pythia was the name given to the oracle that was giving out um, her uh, divinations, which allowed people to make better decisions in their life back then. The, the people who used to go to that Delphic oracle uh, were emperors and kings, um, generals and strategists, and they were usually faced with a life or death decision. So, Transport yourself mentally, if you can, back to that time. You're dealing with something which can essentially destroy your world. You can destroy your kingdom if you're a king, you can destroy your empire if you're an emperor at the time. It is a decision where your own life might hinge on. You're going to play everything on a roll of the dice. If you're doing that, you know, you're not living in a world where information is at your fingertips. You still need more information in order to function. You have some kind of idea, you have some kind of, some kind of stated goals. You are working towards them in your decision. And what you need now is guidance from the gods, which at the time was an acceptable way of making those kind of decisions. But really, if we think about it, the decision has more or less been made. The emperor or the strategist or the supplicant who went to the Delphic Oracle had already more or less made up their mind. So what were they doing by going there, presenting a lavish gift to the temple, to the, god, to the god Apollo? And what were they doing by asking his oracle whether their venture was going to succeed or fail? Well, what they were really doing is they were essentially asking for some kind of permission. They were seeking to alleviate their own doubts, their own inner monologue that told them that what they were doing was risky, it could fail, they didn't have enough information, they were overreaching, they were going to be destroyed, and they wanted inside their head to weigh the odds in their favor. It's no secret that the Pythian Oracle, the Delphic Oracle, gave ambivalent um, sayings, ambivalent judgments, ambivalent sort of forecasts of the future which could only really truly be divined after the event, which is next to useless. However, by providing an ambivalent reading, an ambivalent, ambivalent oracle, which could be interpreted any which way, at the time of presentation, it allowed enough hope, sufficient hope, for the supplicant to go ahead and make the decision. I think, I think Alexander the Great went there before he uh, stormed out of Macedonia and took over the Persian Empire and created at the time one of the largest empires in the world. I think the Athenian generals went there when they were facing the Persian uh, invasion of Greece and they wanted to know whether to flee the city and abandon Athens, which was a city-state at the time, to the Persians or defend it to the death. You know, and they wanted to know if they chose one or the other, which one was most likely to preserve their liberty and life. 
What can we learn from that? Well, essentially human behavior hasn't changed. Today we have access to a lot more information. We have access to a lot more data, for sure. We have, everything is faster, communication is faster. Our ability to uh, analyze things has got better. We have better tools at our disposal. At the same time, despite all that information coming in, the uncertainty which we face hasn't really gone away. We haven't become any more certain in our ability to forecast the future. We haven't become any more certain in our ability to see success um, and whether it is likely. We haven't become any better at understanding whether our choices at the time when we make them are the ones which you should be making. The Delphic Oracle essentially was a permission which those people sought. They dressed it up in a sort of ritualistic way. There was a sort of, sort of ritual that you had to go through. The Python Oracle was under some kind of hallucinogens at the time, historians believe. But nevertheless, that's what was in effect. Somebody in power, somebody in a decision-making role would go there, would intercede or would ask the oracle to intercede between him and the gods, which is a higher authority. God Apollo would say, hey, you may or you may not read what you can into this. And they would indeed do that. What we learn from this is that essentially when it comes to our own ventures, when it comes to our own business, when it comes to our own ideas about our future, charting our course, charting our course, going into um, our own sort of path, what we learn is that we all face the same kind of uncertainty. We face the, fe the, fe the, <laughs> the fear of failure. We face the fear of our own inadequacies and insecurities, which we know only too well. And we face the fear of the unknown and the uncertainties it contains. What we normally seek through our in spreadsheets and analysis and data and the capture points and all those things, what we seek is some kind of certainty, some kind of permission. What if we went to Delphic Oracle and told us the same thing, more or less? So we read into that, what we could. No matter how much data we have in our hands, the situation which we're trying to read is also faster flowing than in the past, we could argue now. No matter how many more tools we have today, the picture which we see is even more granular, even bigger, even faster flowing than anything in the past. So essentially the picture which we're looking at, whether we go back 2000 years ago and we're contemplating uh, amassing an army and heading into the unknown in the hope of capturing more resources and other city-state or glory and fame or whatever it is that we seek, is no different to what we are facing today when we're thinking about starting a business, creating markets, seeking and capturing market share, becoming successful. Since nothing has changed fundamentally, what is it that's holding us back most times? The same thing that held back those people who went into the Delphic Oracle to actually try and part the um, curtains, the fabric of the future, and peer into the unknown with some kind of certainty, a glimmer of what they might be able to have, which would then allow them to drive forward into that unknown with a sense of purpose which they didn't have, perhaps, before. So, <laughs> what do we learn from this? Well, we need to be able to give permission to ourselves to do these things today. We need to be our own oracle. Uncertainty is always going to be there. Our own fears and insecurities are always going to be there. What we face in terms of complexity and um, the uh, sort of unknowns of the future are always going to be there. That isn't going to change. At the same time, our own behavior now, because we have the ability to look back into the past and see how people behaved, and then we have the knowledge to understand why they behaved in those ways. We now have within our means the ability to restructure our own behavior differently. Do you want to take a different path in your business and something is holding you back? Go ahead and take it. 
give yourself the permission necessary to face the risks once you recognize the potential rewards for you. And these things can always be extrinsic because you know, the transactional nature of extrinsic values uh, makes things a little bit more uh, utilitarian, if you like, and then the force that drives us is not sufficient to do that. So recognize what drives you. Recognize what's holding you back. And then give yourself the permission to take those small risks, to face those small fears, to understand that the fear of failure, the uncertainty you face, the choices which you're not sure if they're right or wrong, has always been there as a situation. Be brave in yourself, and at the same time be kind in yourself. And if you apply those two things, bravery and kindness, to yourself, then you're on the other um, moral compass, I'll call it, in this particular case, as you move forward in business, is to do as little damage as possible to other people. And if you succeed in that, then succeed or fail, you're going to have an amazing kind of adventure. You're going to have an amazing kind of life. I know this is probably not the kind of business tip we usually talk about. At the same time, it's just the kind of conceptual thinking we need in order to unlock ourselves from the things which make us freeze when we shouldn't. I really hope this helps. I really hope this helps you extend your thinking. I really hope you find ways to apply it to your business and hopefully to your own life. See you all next time. Take care.